Virtual classrooms and distance learning can take place using Google Meet. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to use your Google Classroom or your learning management system and link a classroom virtually to it so that you're gonna be able to share your screen with your students. You're gonna be able to share your webcam and your face and have that face-to-face -face interaction with your students if you need to present to them virtually. So we're going to start in Google Classroom and we're going to try to make this as easy as possible, not only for the teachers, but for the students that are going to be interacting. So really what we want to do is we're going to go to classwork. And the easiest way for students to see what it is that they owe is to make sure, let me go back to stream for a second, is to see what's coming, what's upcoming, or what is the newest submission in the thread of the stream. And right now it says no work is due soon, so nothing is upcoming. We want to change that. So I'm going to go to classwork and I'm going to create an assignment. And this assignment, I'm just going to make it. And I'm going to provide instructions as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure, yeah, this is an assignment. And the reason I'm doing that is I want it to show up. I want to be able to have that due date. And that can't happen when you just post material for students. There's no due date for just material. So I'm going to make this ungraded and I'm going to make my due date on Monday. And I'm going to have a 9 a.m. deadline. That way students know that they're to join this at 9 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a topic that is going to encompass all of the virtual meetings that I have. So I'm going to keep all of these in our virtual math class folder. Okay. And now I need a link because I need somewhere for my students to be able to go. So that's when I'm going to open up a new Google window and in our waffle you should be able to find meat if it's not here scroll down and just hit more and you should be able to find it and if you want to move it up toward the top of where all of your icons are it'll make it a little bit more accessible for you you're just gonna left click on it and then drag it where you want it when we open up meet it's going to say join or start a meeting and I'm going to click that and I'm actually gonna leave this blank I'm going to hit continue and then what this is going to do it's going to pop me up on it if I wanted to and I could turn my microphone off and turn my camera off if I want I'm going to turn the camera off for right now I'm going to leave the microphone on for the moment and you will see that it has all of your information here your pin number your dial in and your code so for students I'm going to copy this meet code right here I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste that as a link into my assignment. So once I assign this, now students are going to be able to see it. They know that I want them to join at 9 o'clock. It is in my virtual math class folder. And if I go back to stream, you're going to see that it, it shows up in the upcoming. It's due tomorrow at 9 a.m. So when I click on this assignment and I look at it as the instructions, as a student, they're able to click on this and then join the meeting. So I'm going to do this on my cell phone right now. I'm going to show you what this looks like from a student view. I have Google Classroom on my cell phone and I'm going to log in as a student now of my own class. So I'm going to hit Google Classroom. I'm going to find my class. I'm signed in with a different Gmail address, so Parks and Education. And I can see the assignment. There's my math class lecture for Monday. I'm going to click on that. Now there's the link that I would have to click if I was a student. And I'm going to click it to join. And I do have the Google Meet app also. And so you can see me. I can turn my camera off if I'm a student. And I can also turn my microphone off. So I'm going to want to make sure that I do that. So I'm going to do that right now. And as my teacher on the computer goes ahead and starts the meeting. Obviously, as the teacher, I pop up now, and so students are able to see me. But for right now, I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm going to leave my microphone on as a teacher. 
and I'm going to, as a student, on my phone here, hit join meeting. And you can see that I'm going to pop up. So I'm going to turn that microphone off because I was getting some feedback. So you can see that my new student is going to pop up. And so microphones are off. If I'm the teacher, I want to make sure that my microphone is on. I don't want to do that right now because it's going to echo. But when I, as a teacher now, hit present, and I'm going to present my entire screen, you're going to see on my phone, once I hit window that I'm going to share, you'll see that it is going to pop up. And you are going to see on my phone exactly what you see on my computer screen. And so if I'm a teacher now and I want to go to a Jamboard or some sort of whiteboard, I'm able to present to my students exactly what I want. And I'm using a mouse, so I apologize for my handwriting. And your students are able to see that. They're able to interact. They're able to text with you. So if I go back here to my screen and go to the chat feature, On my phone, I'm able to send a message. And as a student, I'm able to send that to my teacher. And now I'm able to read that as the teacher. Sure, I can show an example of a two-step equation. And I could go back to my virtual whiteboard and give another example. So instead of students going ahead and actually talking to you, they're able to type out what it is that they have as questions or what they'd like to comment. So this is going to be a very, very valuable experience for the people and the students that you're trying to connect to from a distance. Once I want to stop my presentation, I can hit stop presenting. So there's one other feature that I want to talk about that's going to take your virtual classroom to the next level. Not every student is going to be able to get online at the exact time that you want them to. But as you present you, these three dots off to the right side, show that you can record your meeting. And as long as you're not posting it on YouTube for everyone to be able to search and view, and you're just keeping it within your classroom, it's going to follow EdLaw 2D. And so that's going to give you double bang for your buck. You're gonna be able to talk to students online that get on during this time that you've set up. And you're also going to be able to have it for those students and the students that didn't get online to be able to view. When you hit record meeting, it'll give you permissions to accept. Up in the upper left hand corner, it will tell you and show you when you are recording. And it's also gonna warn you to turn your mic on. And then when you want it to stop, you go back to those three dots and hit stop recording. This now, this recording will be saved in your Google Drive. You'll be able to take that now and post it into your classroom.